when his parents came to congratulate his acceptance to Stanford. Christopher told them about his real dreams. They kicked him out quickly, forcing the young man to make a choice about his future. He met his father again years later, but the tables had turned. Christopher's mother, Mrs. Davis, couldn't help herself when many college acceptance letters arrived for her son. She grabbed the most important one, Stanford, ripping it savagely open. When she read congratulations, she began jumping and screaming for her husband, Mr. Davis. He came running to the living room, and his wife's enthusiasm could only mean one thing. They both ran together up the stairs and burst into Christopher's room. The young high school senior had been reading some papers on his bed, but flinched when his parents came screaming. They weren't the most affectionate or emotional people, so their delight surprised him. You got in. You got into Stanford. His mother exclaimed, jumping up and down, which was unusual because she hated exercise, sweating, and anything that could mess up her appearance. His stoic father was beaming brightly as she unexpectedly grabbed his son in a bear hug, forcing him up from his bed. My boy, a Stanford man, I'm so proud of you. Wait, guys, Christopher tried to interject, but they weren't listening. Let's call grandma and grandpa. They'll be so excited. Oh, let's plan a party. Invite all your friends, Chris. Mrs. Davis added in delight before hugging him too. Stop, he snapped. What? Don't you want a party? We have to host one, son, Mr. Davis shook his head. Honey, call Mrs. Pattinson. She'll help you organize things. No, Christopher screamed, pulling away and staring at his parents angrily. Christopher, don't yell like that. We're just happy, Mrs. Davis said, frowning. I'm not going to Stanford. He continued, his nostrils flaring and tongue wetting his lips. What? Mr. Davis said quietly, putting his hands on his hips. Son, I know there are other college options. But Stanford is our family legacy. All the men have gone there. You have to go, Mr. Davis stated, his tone reasonable. Christopher had, in fact, gotten into other schools, including Dartmouth and Georgetown. He would do well in any of those schools and could inherit the family business, a conglomerate for sporting goods. Stop. Stop acting like I'm not here. God, don't make plans for me. I don't want to go to any of those schools. Christopher finally revealed a truth that had haunted him for many years. He had tried to express things to his mother, but she ignored him. Chris, his mother warned. No, Mom, I tried to tell you, but you shut me down. Christopher continued, reaching for the papers on his bed. This is where I'm going. I got an internship for fashion in New York. Mr. Davis's face drained of blood, and he started coughing out of the blue. Chris, Mrs. Davis scolded while patting her husband's back. Fashion, are you insane? His father shouted when he recovered, getting closer to tower over his son. He couldn't because Christopher was taller, but the older man had always been intimidating. If you two have listened to anything I've been saying for my entire life, you would have known that my dream is to be a designer. Christopher explained heartily. You sell clothes, Dad. You should understand. No. His father pulled back, shaking his head and finger. No, I own the business. I don't make the clothes, or worse, design them. The business side of any industry is the only one that matters. Christopher was angry at his father's words but didn't want to escalate the situation. Some of the biggest designers in the world have become very rich, successful men. I'm doing it. Once I graduate high school, I'm off to New York with Johnny, Christopher shrugged. Mr. Davis looked at his son while his breathing regulated, then shook his head. You gotta go, the older man said from his son's bedroom doorway. I will not spend another penny so you can waste your life. You're worthless to me. Christopher felt those words as knives in his chest, but Mr. Davis walked away. Mom, it's my dream, Christopher said, his voice breaking. He expected his father to react strongly, but his mother should understand. Our dream for you is Stanford, she continued. Exactly, it's your dream. I have to follow mine Chris lowered his voice and grabbed his mother's hand. Please understand, Mom, I need you to help me convince Dad. No, I agree with him, she took her hand back. You're breaking our hearts, so, you should get out of our house. Mrs. Davis sprinted out of his room. He heard her cries in his parents' bedroom, but he couldn't dwell on it. He packed some bags, called his friend, Johnny, and left. Several months later, after leaving his father's house, Johnny's parents took him in, and when they graduated high school, they left for New York. Johnny was going to NYU while working at his uncle's brokerage company. Chris received a small stipend on his internship but worked nights at a 24-hour market to pay the rest of his bills. He hadn't talked or heard from his parents since the day he left. They didn't even come to his high school graduation. 
It was hurtful but not surprising. Christopher was a real businessman, like his father. Pride filled Richard's chest as all his worries disappeared. A few days later, Christopher's father walked into his company's conference room and shook hands with everyone gathered while maintaining a wide, confident grin. Christopher sat closest to the door at the head of the table, surrounded by his lawyers. Mr. Davis walked to the opposing side near the windows. Most of the negotiations had taken place already. All left was signing the papers, and the company would officially belong to Christopher. Hello, son, Mr. Davis smiled as he shook his hand. Hello, father, he said stoically and squeezed hard. Come on, boy, don't need to be so serious, his father laughed and hit his arm. Your mother is outside. We're going to celebrate after we wrap this up. Christopher didn't say anything else and didn't agree to the invitation. His arrogant father had called him, and instead of begging as he should have after ten years later of silence, he got down to business. He said Christopher had to buy the company because it was destiny. Christopher's first instinct was, of course, to say no and laugh on the phone. However, he had learned never to reveal his emotions regarding business. He was particularly shrewd and had a great poker face. That's how he succeeded. But Mr. Davis didn't need to know that. Everyone sat down and some more discussions took place. It was amusing how relaxed his father was. Christopher side-eyed the older man and again resisted the urge to laugh. The son he had refused to help when Christopher needed it the most. Ten years ago, Johnny helped him get the job at the brokerage firm, and he was so good and natural at it that they kept promoting him despite his age. They paid for his education, and he kept succeeding. 